this week on Saturday Doobie Feature, we watch the Congress. Yeah, not like that U.S. government Congress, which I am definitely going to talk about on this episode. It's got animated parts. <laughs> Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Saturday Doobie Feature. I'm just making myself a little dab. I'm Justin. And I'm Jessica. Today, we're talking about a movie that I really, really want to talk about with you guys, with you gal. It's called The Congress. It came out in 2013, uh, directed by Ari Fullman. Today's uh, cannabis also is provided by The Fave. The Fave? The Fave. The Fave. The Luca Lake. It's my fave. No, I can, uh, they got a lot of cool Star Wars stuff. I don't know. It's pretty pretty sweet for a shop. Tax included. In the price. In it's the like, price. It's basically like you're shopping in Europe. <laughs> you know? It's uh, very it really European. Is. Uh, it really is. Love the guys there. We got some Harley Quinn in the joint today. Um, going for it. Which we're going to go, which I think the CBD in Harley Quinn is going to help us kind of talk about this crazy, trippy movie. Uh, this is your first time seeing it. It right? was my first time seeing it. Okay. It almost makes sense. Can you, yeah, <laughs> kind of sum it up for the people, maybe, maybe gently. You do want me to light that while you, sure. while you sum it up here? Yeah, I'll do that. So, Robin Wright's Robin Wright. She's got, a, it's like the future, maybe. She's got a son. Definitely a little bit of the future. Yeah, yeah, she's got a son and a daughter. The son loves kites. They go into this for like 10 minutes. Which I personally have a fear of kites. I hate kites because I always thought as a kid I was going to get pulled away on a kite. And I would like float away and then get like dropped and like break my bones or something. You're afraid of kites? Like really big kites. (laughs) You know? Like the big ones that if I was holding it, it would make me float away. I don't... You know? Is that a personal thing? At me. I just always thought... If you're afraid of kites... I'm not that light. (laughs) <laughs> these kites are powerful so that's what i'm saying i identify because kites are powerful so she yeah it was just like the kites are for sure a metaphor he like is losing his hearing paul giamatti is his doctor and even and then, though he's losing his hearing he hears what's going on which is funny you know yeah he's reading lips and like paul giamatti is so rude because they're also talking about how robert <laughs> White's career is dying but like while like within one beat of being like, so your son's probably gonna lose all his hearing and sight. He's also like, so how's your career going? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta really tie it back into what we were talking about earlier. I mean, the movie start. Robin Wright is uh, ubiquitous in our lives, and people might not realize why she was in The Princess Bride. She was Jenny and Forrest Gump. She's been in Wonder Woman in recent years. And I love her. The movie really starts addressing her completely as a real person, and saying like, you know, as an aging actress, you're basically running out of options. I- so we need to Grand Moss Tarkin you like. Uh, Rogue One and basically recreate you as a digital likeness It now. takes like a half an hour to get there. Which is, which is <laughs> I, think, I think intentional. You know, they're really they're really building up and building up. But I also think that if you look on Amazon, it does not have a great favorable star rating. I think a lot of people did not make it all the way through it, they didn't, the can, intro of this movie. Can I also tell you something kind of ironic? Please. So the That's whole, why we're here. <laughs> the whole, like, her manager talking to her is all about how she's making poor choices and what movies she wants to be in. That's your job, buddy. But it's ironic because this was a poor choice. What? <laughs> I don't think... Two I, and a half stars? Two and a half stars on Amazon. <laughs> well, I think it's an under... <laughs> it's not that bad, but it doesn't make sense. I really, really love where it goes, I think. So, so, so eventually... Then, yeah, yeah, go for it because I do not understand what happens okay. next. Okay. <laughs> it's a couple years in the future she sells away her digital likeness she can't act in any other movie she only can be her digital likeness in the future because they own the rights to her essentially she goes to basically a product launch it's basically like an apple keynote that they're releasing a new iphone except instead of releasing an iphone they're releasing a way to ingest her essence also everyone's cartoons oh did i mention that, I'm sorry. I didn't mention that. so to be able she to like go to this party no, and yeah, then everyone's cartoons. to be able to go to this party you have to drive through basically this uh this like uh like what uh, I, i'm thinking of the name it's when you like go to mexico highway. you know there's like a border crossing border. you go to the border crossing they yeah. give you a pill you ingest the pill and suddenly you start tripping out while you're driving and, and you're apparently just, that's safe and you're like you are whatever you you people see you however you want it's to very be. ready player one it's so. very weird you can like dr- you like huff a thing and then you're like prettier so and that's, then you that's another thing and you're stronger that's the reason and, and the reason weird. they're all doing that is because that's the product that's getting released is that robin wright is essentially you can be robin wright for a couple seconds as a high you know it's like the crack is robin wright and then also once you once she's there she sees clips of herself 
uh, in playing like, in movies that she didn't un- understand that she was going to be in. Like she made a couple parameters, like I'm not going to do porn. But then they have like Ninja Robin. Yeah, well, and then they show Robot a clip Robin. of her like accepting an award or talking about a movie, and that's not even her. Mm-hmm. So it's like halfway through because it was so trippy. I was like, is this even the real Robin? Right? That's viewpoints we're seeing. It's, we- no, <laughs> it's not. Well, it's. it's, it's, it's it's all it's all after a certain point based on her individual interpretation of this world. So basically, there's like another. Uh, it's very Ready Player One in the sense that there's the, the corporate overlords and they want to control things a certain way. And at a certain point, these kind of like separatists come in because they want more of like an organic, real, creative society, like ego, not ego driven. And eventually, because in she's as she's escaping this, uh, you know, as it all is collapsing, she meets John Hamm, who is her animator. In the movies that she makes, I have feelings about that. So yeah, you have a theory about this. No, I have feelings. Oh, okay. <laughs> no theories, just feelings. <laughs> no. Um. So he loves her because he's been animating her forever, and then Very she honest, just yeah. goes, "Yeah, me too." <laughs> <laughs> She's never met the guy. Is just ready. <laughs> To love a it's dog. Also like, it's, almost like, it's almost like she's a Bonnaroo, you know? Like, she's the hallucinogenic substance that she's taking is, is enhancing yeah. her perception so much that it's very easy to see how she can kind of collapse into that reality. But reality is also collapsing around her. So basically what they say is that the doctors are like, we're, we're going to suspend her animation because we can't figure out what's going on until we can figure out in the future how to basically make her alive in this world, which is only based on her interpretations of the Do you guys understand anyway. any of this? In the future, I don't. She gets woken up again, and <laughs> all she all. wants to do, all she wants to go do, is see the kite with her son again because she left that world behind. She wants the to go see him back is again. A metaphor <laughs> for the sky. John Hamm. They live next because, to an airport too, and there's yeah, like which I don't understand. She's like a semi-successful things. actress, but they live in a trailer, which is like I don't know. The whole beginning is kind of like a poorly shot Terrence Malick movie, basically. <laughs> And then, but once it gets into the cartoons, oh my god, you guys, like, it really feels, some of the visuals. She even says when she's on the phone, she's like, this is like a bad acid trip. It really is, but the way that it captures these psychedelic visuals is very, it's it's so psychedelic in the way that it's not like the typical psychedelic, like, oh, there's a face in the wall, bro. Like, there's like a, a part where he's like, hey, do you see what I see? And he's just like, is looking at a cockroaches playing cards around the table. And like, that's, that's a bad acid trip. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she wants to go see her son in the real world, but her son decided to go into the cartoon world. She, like six, and she like can six never go months back. before she left. Yeah, and because she, she was can... there for years, but then like right before she came back, he's like, I because Paul Giamatti's getting old. I'm trying to talk this through for you guys. No, no, I, I just mean like I'm trying to talk through so I understand, like to make yeah. sure I understand like what happened. But Paul Giamatti's still there, 30 years or whatever in the future. Yeah, Here, sorry. No, and he was getting old, so he couldn't take care of her son. So he goes into cartoon world to be whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because anyone can be what they want you to be. It's like can the I end of Ready Player One. Can I tell you something I learned about myself? No. Okay, yeah, no. I mean, yeah. Paul Giamatti, when he whispers, his voice is kind of hot. Ooh. It's like when he's not yelling. You're like one of those auditory learners. You're not like a visual <laughs> learner. I, I like voice. I like good voice. I like yeah. when people give good face, and I like when people give good voice. I like and when Paul people Giamatti give good hair. gives very good whisper voice. Yeah, you know, he's it's a like, I'm like, wow, if he's not he's a yelling and neurotic. Harvey Keitel's a professional in this movie. That guy that I was talking about earlier is played by the voice of John Hamm, who just has a really great delivery. Such a good voice. I got this dab, by the way, of the White Widow from uh, there. I want to dab it in the High Five Vape. We love our High Five Vape. High Five. Thank you, guys. High Five to you guys for making <laughs> such a great e-nail. Hold on. Um... Yeah, no, John Hamm is a great voiceover. Halfway, th- when it was almost over, I was like, what happened to her daughter? And they were like, she's making babies in Cartoon Land. She just makes babies now. <laughs> You'd be so proud of her. In Cartoon Land. And uh, <laughs> she can never return back to that comfortable reality where John Hamm loved her because that was only the one-time experience that she had made. So any other cartoon reality, she can go back but she's not allowed to go back to the one she already created. It has to be an entirely new one. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like this unhappy ending, but... So then she decides to, like, just to relive through her son's eyes? So, like, be with him? How do you not respect a movie that <laughs> does this? It's like Roger Rabbit crossed with 2001 A Space Odyssey. You guys just gotta watch it. It's really, I mean, like... Those I'm, are I'm two of, it, of my favorite movies. And it's not... Listen, it's not on the same level of quality, but very, very few people... 
shout out to director Ari Foman, who's working on a movie about uh, Anne Frank, which is so funny because they're all they talk about in the beginning of the movie is about how like you know what? we're he, not going to make a Holocaust movie. Everyone makes a Holocaust movie, ha ha ha, and it's like a little joke. Well, yeah, he, he made there. a really good Israeli war film. Uh, that Walt I saw. with Bashir. Yeah, yeah. But this wasn't about that. But that's a really good movie that he made, also. And <laughs> we got to give it up to a director that lives up to the Saturday Doobie feature ethos. If there's a movie that you should be smoking and watching, That's it true. is The Congress. 100%. So thank you guys for checking this episode out. If you want to check me out on Instagram, I always point down here, but my name, you're not going to see my name right now, probably. It's Just Gentile on Instagram. I'm Jessica420, bro. We love you. We love you guys.